Hello, it's Mr. Bush, and today we're going to be going over Newton's second law, also known as the law of force and acceleration. Alright, basically it states that the force of an object is going to be equal to its mass times its acceleration. So let's go ahead and look at that a little bit more mathematically. So, what this equation means is basically however much force is going to be put on an object will be equal to the mass, or basically how much it weighs, multiplied by the acceleration, or how fast that object is moving. And that kind of makes sense. How hard something hits is typically dependent on how heavy it is and how fast it's going. Kind of like if someone can throw a baseball really fast. It hurts more whenever you catch it. That's so let's go ahead and look at this mathematically. So if we had an object that weighed 7 kilograms and it was moving at an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared, how much force would it hit with? Well the equation simply says you just multiply the two together and it would have a force of about 28 newtons. Alright, let's go ahead and look at another example of this real quick. All right, if an object had a mass of 4 kilograms and an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, whenever you multiply those together, you would get 40 newtons of force. So basically, this is showing you that the force on that object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. Let's say you changed uh, some of this. Let's say we added 4 more kilograms in the mass, but we haven't changed the amount of force. Here's what would have to happen. So if you had the 40 newtons of force, 8 kilograms, but you don't know how much acceleration you'd have, well, basically, this is just kind of like one of those elementary math problems. What times 8 would give you 40? Well, that would simply... So you would simply have 5 meters per second squared times your 8 kilograms. That gives you your 40 newtons of force. So basically what we, we did here is, as you add more mass and the force stays the same, the acceleration has to go down. So this is what it basically means. If your mass is going up and your force is staying the same, your acceleration has to go down. And basically the reverse is true. If your acceleration starts to go up, all right, if your mass goes down, then your acceleration has to go up. And that kind of makes sense. If you put the same amount of force into two objects, and one of them weighs less, the lighter object will go further. Let's go ahead and look at a couple examples. In this example, the bowling ball was given the same amount of force as a soccer ball. But because the soccer ball has less mass, because the bowling ball basically has more mass, it does not accelerate as far as a soccer ball. The soccer ball has less mass, it accelerates faster than the bowling ball. Now both objects would have the same amount of force. Basically it's the mass that causes the, uh, the uh, bowling ball to have less acceleration. So for this example we have two objects and they're going to be moving at the same acceleration. So both objects going at the same basic speed except one object is heavier or has more mass than the other object. So if you look there, for object A, you'd have 40 times 20, giving you a total of 800 newtons of force. Whereas with the other one, you'd have 60 times 20, giving you a total of 1,200 newtons of force. So object B would have more force because it has more mass and they're traveling at the same speed. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb. If they're going at the same speed and one of them has more mass, then it will have more force. Alright, hopefully this is helpful and y'all have a great day.